In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make this animation of a run cycle using motion capture data. A good source of free motion capture data is the Carnegie Mellon University Motion Capture Database. The data can be used in commercially sold products, provided it is used to make animations and not just to resell the data directly. There are many different motion capture file formats. The format that can be imported directly into Blender is BVH. Bruce Hahn has converted the data into this format, so we need to go to his website. He has made versions for several different packages. I found the DAS friendly version works best. Scrolling down, we see links to a set of zip files Download the zip files and extract the data to an appropriate folder. In the folders are the motion capture files. In the root, there are copies of the index in several different file formats. The index gives a description of what is in each file. But before I import the motion capture data into Blender, I'm going to use a utility called BV Hacker. Go to the website and download and install the utility. In BV Hacker, open a motion capture file. The example I'm going to use for this tutorial is in folder 09, the file 0903. I'm moving the window up so that we can see the play and step buttons at the bottom of the screen. At the moment, the frame rate is 120 frames per second. Click the half sample button to halve the number of frames and click the button again to go down to approximately 30 frames per second. The armature has eyes which I don't want so I'm going to right click on the head and remove descendants. The armature has fingers which again I don't want so I'm going to right click on the hand and remove descendants and right click on the left hand and remove descendants. Change the view to the right view and zoom out. Using these buttons we can step through the animation frame by frame. At frame 1 is the T pose which we're going to have to get rid of if we're going to make a looping run cycle. To delete frame 1 go to frame 2 and click mark in and crop. At the start of the animation the runner's legs are crossed with the far leg touching the ground. Stepping through the animation, the legs cross with the near leg touching the ground and cross again at frame 23. I don't want the same pose twice, so I'm going to delete frame 23. Go to frame 22, click mark out and crop. Clicking play, we have all the frames that we want. BV Hacker has a knit button that will blend the last frame to the first frame. Click it twice and we get a run cycle. In the file menu, save the edited BVH file to your working folder. Give the file a meaningful name. I've saved a few practices already. In the first tutorial of the Monkey Robot series, I made a character skin or body from a set of mesh objects. In this file, I've added cubes for the hands and feet. These are the scale and location values for the hands. You can download the file from my website. These are the scale and location values for the feet. I'll put all the values in the description below. These are the color values for the feet and these are the color values for the hands. I forgot to name the hand material. To import the motion capture file in the file menu import motion capture. Set the scale to 0.05. Go to the folder where you save the edited BVH file. Select it and import. Zoom back with a mouse wheel, set the total length of the animation to 22 frames and click play. 
Now all we have to do is connect the body parts to the armature's bones. Go into edit mode. In the properties of the armature turn X-ray on. Press A twice to select all and use the tip of the blue arrow to move the armature down. Zoom in with the mouse wheel and press S to scale and drag to make the armature bigger. By using a mix of the blue arrow and S to scale, try to get the top of the backbone in line with the top of the body and the top of the legs in the gap. Next, I'm going to work on the arm. Shift and mouse wheel to pan down. Control and mouse wheel to pan left and right. Zoom in with the mouse wheel. Select the tail of the hand bone and use the tip of the red arrow to make the bone bigger. Select the hand bone, hold down shift, select the lower arm bone, hold down control and press P to make parent and click connected. Zoom back with the mouse wheel, select the lower arm bone, hold down shift, select the upper arm bone, hold down control, press P and click connected. Select the upper arm bone, hold down shift, select the collar bone, hold down control, press P and click connected. Select the tail of the hand bone and use the tips of the arrows to place it. Select the wrist joint and use the arrows to place it. Select the elbow joint and place it. Select the shoulder joint and place it. Change the view to the top view. Now the monkey robot structure is flat, but the armature isn't. The backbone, for instance, leans back quite a lot. Use the tip of the green arrow to move the joints more in line with the body parts. The question is, having moved the bones, will the motion still look natural? To test to see what the motion looks like, we need to connect the body parts to the bones. We do that in pose mode. Change the view to the front view and zoom back. Go into pose mode and we hit the problem that the character is not in the T pose. Press A on the keyboard to select all. I want to keyframe a T pose at frame one. To do that, I need to move the other keyframes down the timeline Drag to make the timeline window bigger. Change the window to a dope sheet. With the cursor in the window, press G to grab one and enter. And change the window back to a timeline. To set up the keyframe, go to frame, go to frame one, make change, clear transform all, insert keyframe, whole character, now we have a T pose at frame one. Now we can connect the body parts to the bones. I usually select the bone first, although it's not essential. Select the hand, hold down shift, select the hand bone, hold down control, press P, and make the bone the parent. Select the bone, select the body part, hold down shift, select the bone, hold down control, press P, and click bone. Select the bone, select the body part, hold down shift, select the bone, hold down control, press P and click bone. Zoom back, select the backbone, select the body, hold down shift, select the backbone, control and P and bone. Zoom back and click play and everything looks okay except for the hand which I will adjust later. Go back into edit mode. And you may have noticed that the other arm has not changed and you might have wondered why I didn't put x-axis mirror on. I think the imported armature is just not symmetrical. I've tried a few things to make it symmetrical but I can't get x-axis mirror to work. So I'm afraid you're going to have to practice the techniques by doing the other arm yourself. Pan up so that we can work on the leg, shift and mouse wheel. Control and mouse wheel to pan to the right and zoom in. 
Drag with the middle mouse button to rotate the view to make it easier to select the foot bone. Hold down shift, select the lower leg bone, hold down control, press P and click connect it. Change the view back to the front view. Select the lower leg bone, hold down shift, select the upper leg bone, hold down control, press P and click connect it. Select the knee joint and use the blue arrow to move it up. Select the ankle joint and use the blue arrow to move it up into the shoe. Select the tail of the foot bone and use the blue arrow to move that up. Change the view to the right view and use the arrows to place the bones. To connect the body parts to the bones, go into pose mode, select the foot bone, select the foot, hold down shift, select the foot bone, hold down control, press P and click bone. Change the view to the front view, select the bone, select the body part, hold down shift, select the bone, control P and bone. Select the bone, select the body part, hold down shift, select the bone, control P and bone. Zoom back with the mouse wheel and click play and again it looks okay. I have jumped ahead and done the other leg and arm. Next I'm going to edit the neck and head bones and connect them. Pan down shift and mouse wheel and zoom in until we are able to select the head bone. Removing the descendant bones in BV Hacker left this very small head bone. It may have been better to have deleted the bones in Blender. Click the bone properties, set the Z location of the tail to 2.5, set the X location to 0 and the X location of the head to 0. Select the neck bone and set the X location of its tail to 0. Select the head bone, hold down shift, select the neck bone, control and P and click connected. Zoom back with the mouse wheel and change the view to the right view. Select the joint and use the tip of the blue arrow to move it up. Select the tail of the head bone and use the tip of the blue arrow to move it up. Go into pose mode and zoom in with the mouse wheel. Select the neck bone, select the neck, hold down shift, select the neck bone, control and P and bone. Select the head bone, select the head, hold down shift, select the head bone, control and P and bone. Zoom back with the mouse wheel and click play. Now all the parts are connected. I need to remove the T pose, but before I do that I'm going to make some alterations. I'm going to alter the position of the head. For some reason, the head is turned to the side and is leaning too far forwards. One way of fixing this is to go into edit mode and I found by adding 40 degrees to make the roll 130, the head looked forwards. Change the view to the right view. Click on the triangle to increase the Y location of the tail of the bone. Click it twice and that will lift the head up. Change the view to the front view. Select the hand bone. Click on the triangle to decrease the Z location of the tail. Click twice. Go into pose mode and click play. Now all we have to do is remove the T pose. Press A twice to select all. Click the tools tab under keyframes, click remove. Click delete keyframe, go to frame 2 and back to frame 1 and the T-pose is gone. To shift the keyframes back down the timeline, change the window to a dope sheet. With the cursor in the window, press G minus 1 and enter and go back to a timeline window. Clicking play, the motion looks OK, but if I change the view to the right view, there's a bit of a judder as we go from the last frame to the first frame. The character is further forward in the last frame compared with the first frame. 
As a rough attempt to improve the blending, press G to grab, Y for the Y axis, minus 0.1 and enter, and insert keyframe whole character. Go to the last frame, press G to grab, Y for the Y axis, 0.1 and enter, and insert keyframe whole character. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put all the files used in the tutorial and the finished file for you to download at my website. Click the link or the eye icon. If you'd like to subscribe, click the link or the stickman. Thanks for watching and goodbye.